Hello friends, I'm Dr. Navneet Kaur from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Sagar Institute of Research and Technology College. Today I'm taking lecture on subject signals and system. The topic which I'll discuss in this lecture is operation on different signals. In my previous lecture, I have already discussed about the definition of the signal and the different types of signals and its examples. Now in this lecture, I'll discuss the effect of different operations which can be performed on signals. First operation which is normally used in the analysis of the signal is the time shifting of the signal. Time shifting, it maps the input signal to the output signal given by yt is equal to xt minus b. Here yt is the resultant signal which, which is obtained after shifting. It is dependent on the variable time t. x is the original signal which is shifted by a real number b. Now such a transformation shifts the, shift the signal either to the left or to the right along the time axis which depends on the value of the b. If B is greater than 0, then Y is shifted to the right by magnitude B relative to X. It is also called time delayed signal. Similarly, if B is less than 0, then Y is shifted to the left by magnitude B relative to X and is called time advanced signal. Now here we can see the time shifting with the help of an example. Say I have some original signal xt which is shown in the triangular form. It is centered on t is equal to 0. Now if I want to obtain another signal which is given by xt minus 1. That means I want to delay this signal xt by 1 unit. Now here delay means that I will shift this signal towards the right along the time axis by one unit because here the value of B is one. So this signal was initially centered at t is equal to zero. Now it will be centered at t is equal to one. That means the signal is shifted along the t axis by one unit. Now here this will be the resultant signal which is delayed by one unit. Similarly, if I want to obtain another signal which is xt plus 1, here we can see that b is equal to minus 1 because I can write it as t minus of minus 1. That means b is equal to minus 1. So if b is equal to minus 1, I will shift the original signal xt towards the left by one unit. So here I will get a signal which will be now centered at t is equal to minus 1. So I will get the time advanced version of my original signal xt. Similarly, if I will have b as set 2, the signal will be shifted along the t axis by 2 units towards the right if it is delayed. And if it is advanced, then it will be shifted towards the left by 2 units. Now, another operation which can be performed on signal is the time reversal of signal. Time reversal is also known as reflection or it is also known as folding. It maps the input signal x to the output signal given by yt is equal to x of minus t. That means the signal, if it was initially having value at t is equal to 1, the new signal will have value, same value at t is equal to minus 1. Say I will put t is equal to 1 here. So y1 is equal to x of minus 1. That means y will have value at t is equal to 1, which is same as which signal x was having at t is equal to minus 1. So here I will get the mirror image of the signal x of t in my new signal yt. So the output signal is a reflection of the input signal about the y-axis t is equal to 0. Now, 
This I can explain with the help of an example. Say I have a signal XT, which is shown here. Now, if I want to obtain another signal YT, which is X of minus T, then I'll have to fold this signal about T is equal to zero. That means the values which was at T is equal to one, two, and three, now will be at t is equal to minus 1, t is equal to minus 2, and t is equal to minus 3, and so on. Similarly, the values which was at t is equal to negative values, now same values will be at t is equal to positive value. Minus 1 value will be reflected at t is equal to 1. Similarly, minus t is equal to minus 2 value will be seen at t is equal to 2, and so on. That means I will get the mirror image of the signal xt. Now, the next operation is time scaling of signal. Time scaling is also known as time compression or time expansion, which will map the input signal to the output signal by t is equal to x of a t, where a is a positive real number. <clears throat> if a is greater than 1, then the resultant signal y t will be compressed along the horizontal axis by a factor of a relative to x. Similarly, if a is less than 1, y will be expanded along the horizontal axis by a factor of 1 by a relative to x. Now, this can be shown in this example. Say I have a signal xt which is shown here. Now, if I want to obtain another signal x2p, here we can see that it is time scaling because here t is multiplied by some constant value, say 2. This 2 is a. Here a is greater than 1 because we know 2 is greater than 1. So now the resultant signal will be compressed by a factor of 2. This I have already discussed in my previous slide that if a is greater than 1, y will be compressed along the horizontal axis by a factor of a. Now, this signal will now be compressed by a factor of 2. That means the, sig the value which was at t is equal to 0 will remain at t is equal to 0, whereas the, sig the value which was at t is equal to minus 1 will now add t is equal to minus half. And t is equal to 1 value will be reflected at t is equal to half. So here we can see the shape of the signal is same, but now the signal is compressed by a factor of 2. Similarly, if I want to obtain another time scale signal, say x t by 2, here I can see that a is equal to 1 by 2. And we know half is less than 1. So if A is less than 1, then the signal will be time expanded by a factor of half. That means this value which was at t is equal to minus 1 will now be at t is equal to minus 2. The value which was at t is equal to minus half will now be at t is equal to minus 1. Similarly, the value which was at t is equal to 1 will now be at t is equal to 2 and the value which was at t is equal to half and now it will be at t is equal to 1. So here we can see that this is the expanded version of this original signal which is expanded by a factor half. Now similarly if I will have x3t then I will compress this signal by a factor of 3 and here if I will have xt by 3 then I'll expand the signal. That means this value will be now at minus 3 and this value will be at 3. Now, there is one more example for time scaling. Say I have this signal yt, which is from 0 to 3 and the amplitude of the signal is 2. Now, if I want to obtain another signal wt, which is y3t. Now, here a is equal to 3, which is greater than 1. So, the signal will be comp compressed by a factor of 3. So, the value which was at t is equal to 3 will now be at t is equal to 1. So, there is no change in the amplitude. Only there will be a time compression. 
Similarly, I have, if I want to obtain a by t by 3, that means a is equal to 1 by 3, which is greater than 1. So I'll expand the signal by a factor of 3. So the value which was at t is equal to 3 will now be at t is equal to 9. So the signal will be expanded. Now, the next operation is amplitude scaling. Amplitude scale signal is shown as by t is equal to a x t. That means instead of multiplying a with t, a is a taken as a coefficient of x t where a is a real number. Now, the output signal is now expanded and compressed in amplitude and are reflected about the horizontal axis. Whereas in time scaling, the signal was expanded or compressed with respect to time axis. Whereas there, in amplitude scaling, there is a compression and the expansion along the y-axis. Say I have signal xt, which is having maximum amplitude 1 and minimum amplitude minus 1. It is, a, it is say, in the form of a sinusoid. Now, if I want to obtain another signal 2xt, 2xt means the value which was minus 1 will now be minus 2. That means amplitude will be multiplied by now 2. The value say at t is equal to 1 is 0. So 0 multiplied by 2 will remain 0. So here at 1 we'll have value 0. At t is equal to 2 it is having value 1. If I will multiply 2 with 1 I will get 2. So at t is equal to 2 I am having value 2 amplitude. So, this will be 2xt. Similarly, if half xt, then I will compress the amplitude value by half. That means it will be minus half and it will be plus half at t is equal to 2. Say I, if I want to obtain minus 2xt, then the amplitude will be multiplied by minus 2. The value which was having minus 1 at t is equal to 0, if I multiply minus 1 with minus 2, I will get 2. So, here I can see at t is equal to 0, I am having value 2. Similarly, at t is equal to 2, the value was 1. If I multiply 1 with minus 2, I will get minus 2. So, here at t is equal to 2, I am having value amplitude minus 2. So, this is minus 2xt. Now, after discussing some basic operation on the signal, now we will see some elementary signals which are normally used in the signal analysis. Now, first I'll have sinusoidal and exponential signals. Sinusoids and exponentials are important in system and signal analysis because they arise naturally in the solution of the differential equation. Now, sinusoid signals can be expressed as, say, a sine 2 pi f naught t, or I can write 2 pi f naught as omega naught. Say I will write A sine omega naught t. Where omega naught is 2 pi f naught. Or f naught can be written as 1 upon t naught. Where t naught is the time period of the sinusoidal wave. <clears throat> now, after sinusoidal signal, I have real exponential signal. Which is A e raised to power A t. And I have one more signal which is very important, which is complex exponential. That means I'll have e raised to power j omega naught t. Since <clears throat> there is a j factor here, so this is a complex exponential. And we know according to Euler's formula, e j omega naught t can be written as cos omega naught t plus j sine omega naught t. Well, now we can see A is the amplitude of the sinusoid or exponential signal which can be seen in both the equation. F naught is the fundamental frequency of the sinusoidal signal and omega naught is the radian frequency. Now all sinusoids and complex exponentials are periodic signals that means they will repeat their pattern after every fixed interval of time. I have already discussed periodic and non-periodic signals in my previous lecture. Whereas real exponential signal is never periodic, it is always non-periodic signal. Now, another important signal is the unit impulse function. Now, here I must 
डिस्कस दैट यूनिट इम्पल्स फंक्शन इज द डेरिवेटिव ऑफ द यूनिट स्टेप फंक्शन और यूनिट स्टेप इज द इंटीग्रल ऑफ द यूनिट फंक्शन नाउ हेयर इफ आई सी दैट दिस इज अ यूनिट स्टेप फंक्शन विद एम्पलीट्यूड वन अपॉन ए एंड विथ हैज ए वेर दिस वैल्यू इज माइनस ए बाय टू एंड दिस वैल्यू इज ए बाय टू इफ ए टेंस टू जीरो then the width will be zero and the amplitude will be infinite so i'll i'll get an impulse signal with width zero so i'll have one impulse p is signal at t is equal to zero the area under the impulse is called strength or weight so the impulse signal is represented graphically by a vertical arrow which is located at t is equal to 0 an impulse with the strength of 1 is called a unit impulse signal so here we can see this height is shown 1 if i want to obtain say 5 delta t minus 1 here i can see i am having two operation on my signal one is the shifting or delayed version and one is the amplitude scaling because here 5 is getting multiplied by the signal So for shifting, I'll shift this impulse signal from t is equal to zero to t is equal to one, and for amplitude scaling, I'll increase the strength of this impulse signal one to five. So this will be my resultant signal five delta t minus one. Now there are some properties of the impulse function. First is the sampling property. according to the sampling property if i'll have some signal gt which is getting multiplied by the shifted impulse function and it is integrated between minus infinity to plus infinity if it is always equal to the second function but located at the point where this impulse is being shifted so since here i can see that the impulse is shifted to t is equal to t not so i'll have the resultant signal in place of this integral as g t not for scaling property delta a t minus t not is given by 1 of magnitude a delta t minus t not and the replication property says that the convolution of any signal with the impulse function signal is the signal itself so here i can see gt convolution with delta t is always gt now this is all for today's lecture thank you